What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG down there on the YouTube.com. We like magic, you know by now. And yeah, I'm doing a fast talking bit because Wizards just spoiled 25 new cards today. And I want to talk about every single one of them, so I have to go quickly because they're all about as hype as this shirt. Let's go. This first one, I think, is the only one that will require translation here. This is Peacekeeper Colossus, and it's super ridiculous. It's a three-mana vehicle. It's a 6-6 six, six that you can crew for four. But the cool part about it is this activated ability here. It's one and a white, another target vehicle you control becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. So you can basically crew any other vehicle for two mana. So yet another thing that can crew Heart of Quran really, really easily and all of the other vehicles that we'll see today because there's like a bunch of them and they're all just like so ridiculous. When you have something like this, at least, that can crew them for just two mana instead of having to tap guys and stuff, like this is just ridiculous. And it does suck that it's like any other one, but you know, if you have two of them out at the same time, they can crew each other with their activated abilities. So that's pretty awesome. This is a really good addition that at first, at first I was like, I don't know if this goes in or not, but the more I think about it, yeah, you know, this probably does certainly go in. I mean, it's a six, six. It only costs a three, you know, just lots of, lots of good stuff. I actually want to talk like way more about this card, but I'll probably bring it up a couple of more times over the course of this video because like there's a lot of good vehicles. For instance, the second card that we saw spoiled today, Consulate Dreadnought. Check this thing out right here. It's just one mana for a, for a vehicle. It's a 711 with crew six. I mean, it's a 711, and it's open all day, too. Like, this thing looks really, really good to me. It's just a one drop. I mean, it's a one drop, and yeah, it looks hard to crew, but we just saw the thing that crews it for two mana on turn four. That's pretty awesome, you know. And we'll see another card towards the end of this video, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and let you know. That looks innocuous, but it also helps crew things, and it's it gets really nasty. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. But anyway, all I'm saying is that stuff like this is now very easy to crew, and this is only this is only a mana, you guys. Like, and I like this. I like talking about good cards, and as some people are turned off by cards that look really, really good, um, which I don't I don't understand. Especially when this is an uncommon, and it's never going to get like super expensive to play, and it'll go in like maybe the budget vehicles deck, or maybe even the real vehicles deck. I mean, it's just the one. It's one mana. It's one mana, you know. But in that deck, I guess you want to do like. Thraven Inspector, cool Toolcraft Exemplar in turn one, follow up with Heart of Quran or Smuggler's Copter. I mean, there's other stuff you want to do, don't get me wrong, but just one mana for a 7-Eleven, you guys. That is, frack, come on. Third card we saw today, this is Foundry Assembler. It's five mana for a 3-3 three, three artifact creature. It's an assembly worker, and it's got Improvise. Now, here's an interesting piece right here, definitely. I mean, it's sort of got the Affinity for Artifacts thing going. Improvise is not quite Affinity for Artifacts. Having to tap them is kind of blah. But still, you know, you could end, this could end up costing you basically nothing, <laughs> you know, if you do it right. And the Artifact Aggro deck looks like it's coming along, you know, just the sort of probably just the Colorless Vehicles deck is what it's looking like. Um, and this could definitely be a part of it, but I don't know how, how many times you're going to want to, like, tap all your guys to play a 3-3. Card number four, this is Sweatworks Brawler. That's a name. It's four mana. That's three and a red for a 3-3 human artificer with Improvise and Menace. So are people going to want to tap three guys and pay a mana for a 3-3 uh, three, three with Menace? <laughs> you know, sort of the same question as the last guy. This looks really good in draft and sealed. Especially, you know, this and the last guy look actually really good in draft. If you're drafting specifically this deck, you know, it looks like there might be a mono-red artifacts or improvised deck, you know, just based on a couple of things we saw today. But it's probably going to strictly be a draft archetype. So looking good as far as that's concerned, but I'm not really sure, again, how much play this will actually see in, in constructed formats. Actually, zero play is probably the real answer here. This is Shipwreck Moray. It's the next card. It's four mana. That's three generic and a blue for a zero five fish. I like that it's just a fish. And uh, when Shipwreck Moray enters the battlefield, you get four energy counters. That's pretty cool. You can pay one energy to have Shipwreck Moray get plus two, minus two until end of turn. So you can get it to a 4-1, you know, like cards like this again are pretty good in limited environments like Draft and Sealed, but outside of that we'll see probably very, very, very little play. I do like that 4 mana gets you 4 energy, that seems okay, I mean, for a body giving you 4 energy and, and being a good blocking body too, that's not bad. But again, outside of budget decks, I'm not really sure. Now the Mono Blue, 
um, uh, deck, the Mono Blue Energy deck that we posted a month or so ago at this point, could maybe utilize this. I mean, four energy is nothing to sneeze at. That's really, really good. So I'd like to try it out in that, but in competitive play, never. Card number six, this is Silk Weaver Elite here. It's three mana, that's two and a green for a 2-2 Elf Archer with Reach. And it's got Revolt. Here's our first look at this ability. When Silk Weaver Elite enters the battlefield, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, you draw a card. Now, as far as the card itself, this is, again, looks like a limited piece, you know, more pretty, you know, pretty sealed oriented. It looks fine to me. But as far as the ability, Revolt, first time we're seeing it, this looks pretty interesting to me. And a lot of people have been racking their brains trying to figure out the best cards that can easily leave the battlefield, which makes a lot of sense. You know, here's a couple right here. Um, but I think that the, a lot of these cards, um, there's a couple that we'll see very aggressively costed here today. Um, I think that some of these are probably just good on their own without a bunch of tricks. Um, and we'll, by the way, I'll point this out. We'll see like a one mana creature a little bit later that I cannot wait to talk about. That'll go really well with this ability. But anyway, um, I think that they just work on their own sort of just un, in regular gameplay. You know, if you, we'll see a two drop a little bit later on with Revolt. You know, if a creature, if, or if a thing left the battlefield this turn, then it gets, it gets a little better somehow. Um, and I think that, like, let's say you play a one drop, you're playing against Dagger, they play their one drop. Uh, you go and you swing in and they trade, you know, they lose their one drop, you lose yours. Well, then suddenly that two drop gets way, way better. And the same thing with this, you know, on turn two or on turn three, if you swing in with a two drop and they trade two drops with you, well, then you get to draw a card when you play this. So just under regular gameplay terms, this seems like it could be a pretty good ability, much less with things in the deck that can help to break it. So I like the ability an awful lot because you don't necessarily have to try to break it. I'm sure a few cards in your deck will be there to do so. Um, but at the same time, just under regular, you know, gameplay situations, this will end up working for you a lot of the time. Whether you're playing against other aggro decks or you're playing against control decks that like to, like, you know, uh, instant speed remove one of your creatures when you swing in, this ability looks pretty good. Here's something else with Revolt right here. This is Night Market Aeronaut. It's four mana. That's three and a black for a 2-2 flyer. It's an Aetherborn Warrior. That's cool. And it's got Revolt 2. Night Market Aeronaut enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. So sealed play and not much else. That's really not, that's all I have to say about it. I've said a lot about Revolt already. So, I mean, sealed and limited, yeah, you'll probably end up playing this. It'll be like a, a big flyer. It's not bad, but no constructed play, obviously. Here's another card with Revolt. This is Decommission right here. I just, I love the name. It's a three mana that's two and a white for an instant destroy target artifact or enchantment. And it's got Revolt. If a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, you gain three. And for my money, Appetite for the Unnatural is probably like better than this, honestly. Like no condition you have to fill, you still gain some life. So I don't know how much play this will actually see, but again, at your pre-release, this will probably see all the play. <laughs> like almost certainly in, a, in an environment that is controlled for just this just this set and um and Kaladesh. When you when you get this, it definitely goes into your board in sealed or limited, whatever. So do do play it in that situation. Now here's an awesome card. This is Whir of Invention right here. It's X and three blue mana for an instant with Improvise, and you can search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost X or less, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. That's hilarious. Three blue mana is a little prohibitive, but look at the stupid thing. Like, it's sort of a court of calling, um, but four artifacts, and that's that's pretty good. Um, not only in the obvious formats like Commander, EDH, yes, obviously, obviously in those formats the card is super dope, but even in standard, even in standard, this card could actually be a real serious thing, you guys. Um, obviously, this is a format full of good artifacts. Don't have to tell you that. It's a format full of good artifacts, um, and a couple of which will probably end up costing a bunch of mana, um, and we saw a couple in the Invention series that will be in the main set just the other day, and those you know, those could you know, go search those up with this. I just don't think that there's going to be a shortage of ideas as far as how to use this card in standard, so can't wait for that. Really, really have always liked cards like this. Just say, pay a bunch of mana and go get a thing and put it into play. That's just really, that's always good no matter what, and if anything, this card will be very, very important in Commander and EDH forever. So go ahead and pick up some copies when it comes out. Now this is a card I also really like here. This is Sram's Expertise. It's four mana, that's two and two white for a sorcery. Create three 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. And you may cast a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. 
crazy. <laughs> like, I like that it's a perfect counterpoint to expertise. You know, that kills a bunch of creatures. This creates a bunch of creatures, and you get a free spell. For just four mana, that's really good. You know, at one spot on the curve higher, we have Goblin Dark Dwellers, and we like that card. Um, and I love cards that create a bunch of tokens all at one time. We've got a lot of stuff for that in the format right now um, that helps a wide board out. So love everything about this. Even if you just play like a servo exhibition off of it, you still get five creatures all at one time. So that's really good. Um, or if you maybe you could play like a collective effort off of this and that would that would synergize pretty darn well right there. So there's no shortage of stuff in the format you could play, you know, Thalia off of this or something. All of that seems good, so I just, I don't see an excuse not to at least try this card out. And maybe like in the red-white tokens deck that plays like Hamar Garrison and stuff, this also looks good in that. Looks good with Angel of Invention, and just blah, like, huh, Gideon, definitely. So yeah, we'll, we'll try this card because it looks dumb. This card looks dumb. If this were one of the only cards spoiled today, I would talk for like five minutes about it, but we gotta keep going, and so let's talk about Sram himself. This is Sram Chief, I love this name, Senior Edificer. That is the name. It's two mana, uh, one and a white for a 2-2 legendary dwarf advisor. And he's got, whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, you draw a card. Sweet commander. Super sweet commander as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you can fill your deck with these all day. And we just saw a bunch of new vehicles today, and there will probably be a few more in the set before all is said and done. So this card looks pretty sweet to me in, in those formats. But as far as standards concerned, maybe. Maybe. Now, on turn two... In these decks, you're going to be wanting to play, you know, you got Veteran Motorist, you got Smuggler's Copter, you got Heart of Koran. I don't know how many two drops we can clog into that deck. Honestly, especially considering this is not an artifact like Smuggler's Copter, Heart of Koran, and we're already playing Veteran Motorist. We, do, we want to have as many things for like Toolcraft Exemplar on turn two as we possibly can. So there are some construction problems with putting this in a standard deck, but I still think that it could end up working. Drawing a card is just always good, and if this thing draws you two or three cards over the course of the game, then it's done crazy amounts of work for you. So definitely think it could go in as a two of, three of possibly, and I'd love to try this thing out because... In decks like that, you know, Veteran Motorist already helps you scry. Depala is card advantage as well. So something that just straight up draws you cards could really put that deck over the top. When aggro decks get card advantage, it can get really scary. So looking forward to trying this thing out. Now here's a neat piece of removal. This is Fatal Push right here. It's black, just a black mana for an instant. That's cool too, with Destroy Target Creature if it has converted mana cost two or less. And it's also got Revolt. Destroy that creature if it has converted mana cost four or less instead if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. All right, so it's not Tragic Slip, but it's probably, I like that it's sort of named a little bit like, tra like it's supposed to remind you of tra Tragic Slip a little bit. Um, definitely, it looks like a callback to me is all I'm saying, but still, good card in standard and possibly even modern, we'll see. I mean, like, Death Shadow, this could destroy Death Shadow like that, you know, even if it's huge at this point. So that seems pretty good. Um, <laughs> I'll try that out too. But in standard, this also looks phenomenal. It looks like aggro is making a little bit of a push based on some of the stuff that we see today. So this could be fantastic. At instant speed, it can destroy Smuggler's Copter, Heart of Koran, and everything up under it. Toolcraft Exemplar, um, even down to like uh, the, the Thraben Inspector and stuff. So looks pretty dope and is a good control for any ridiculous one and two drops that they make. So love the fact that this card exists, even if you never get the revolt. But when you do get the revolt, the card becomes instantly ridiculous. So definitely a premier piece of removal that we'll absolutely see play. Here's a hype mythic. This is Gonti's Aether Heart right here. It's six mana for a legendary artifact. And whenever Gonti's Aether Heart or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you get two energy counters. And you can pay eight energy counters and exile Gonti's Aether Heart to take an extra turn after this one. Funny, a card that makes you take extra turns. When I did the uh, what rules would you change, I had a number of people, it's probably 10 or 12 people in the comments, like, get rid of cards that make you take an extra turn. Those are dumb. But here's one that makes you take an extra turn. And to be honest with you, I like cards like that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of taking an extra turn. Um, and I know it's a headache for the other player, but it's really fun for the guy taking the extra turn. So there's that. Um, but in any case, the card looks really interesting to me, but we have Aetherworks Marvel in the format. And I think that Aetherworks Marvel just overshadows this card, especially considering you have to exile it so there's no tricks. No tricks. You got to exile it. You can only do this once. So you don't, don't be doing stupid stuff. Just like part the water veil. But, but... Want to point out that we still have 
Park the Water Veil in the format along with this. So we've got a few different ways to take extra turns right now. And it can. Pr there's probably a thing. There's probably a deck. Um, so I like the card. I'm pretty hyped about it. In Commander, it could be a thing, obviously. Big, splashy artifacts like this usually are. So I do like it, but I'm not really sure of the practical application of it in a constructed format. But we'll, we'll certainly see. People always try to make taking extra turn cards work. Here's Green Belt Rampager right here. Love that name, too. It's just a green mana for a 3-4 elephant. Yay, elephant. And it looks, it kind of reminds you of a rogue elephant, too. But anyway, when Green Belt Rampager enters the battlefield, you pay two energy counters. Now, if you can't, you return Green Belt Rampager to its owner's hand, and you get an energy. Now, here's an interesting card because Revolt is a thing, you know? You play this, and you don't have energy any energy counters out, then you can instantly get Revolt on whatever you play next. You know, that looks pretty darn good for just the one mana. It's also pretty cool with Surge, you know, that's still in the format, just one mana. Um, so, you know, you either get the energy counter or you get a 3-4 elephant. I like the fact that this is just one mana for a 3-4. That is just stupid. That is ridiculous stats, you guys. One mana for a 3-4. And yeah, you'll probably never get this on turn one, honestly, but it's you're not supposed to get it on turn one. You play it on turn two or three, you know, uh, but just one mana, just one mana. Imagine playing this on turn three alongside a height two drop, you know, just this looks really, really stupid. You know, you play like Servant of the Conduit and then next turn, boom, you got this guy. Um, so I like that. I like that, like Harness Lightning, take out a one drop or, you know, a one, a one toughness guy. And then next turn you play this dude and you get him. So that seems good. It also seems interesting to um, play this guy turn one, return him to your hand, get an energy counter. And then turn two, you've got um, a, a Harness Lightning online that can take out a four toughness guy. That also is, seems like a play to me too. So lots of stuff about this guy. A one mana three, four, like yes. I was just telling you, aggro seems like it's making a push. This guy's part of that. Really, 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 really hype about this creature. Here's Green Wheel Liberator. This is the card I was telling you about earlier, the two drop with Revolt. It's two mana, one and a green for a 2-1 Elf Warrior with Revolt. It's a, by the way, relevant creature type. Green Wheel Liberator enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. So I talked about this card a little bit earlier. I like the applications of this two drop. It's a four tough or four power creature for just two mana. And green already has that in Voltaic Brawler. And interesting, by the way, that the elephant we just saw at one mana works with energy. So now the green red energy deck has a has a good one drop and or at least a one, you know, a one CMC creature. And that that works with energy. <laughs> Let's finish that uh, finish that thought there. And it's got two two drops that can get to four power, both this and Brawler. So that deck's looking better every day, too. I actually think that this could be a very important card with Revolt for at least budget decks. And we're maybe even seeing like a mono green Stompy deck happening. I hope that's really a thing. So it will be on this channel, at least. <laughs> we're going to try and make that. So like the last couple of cards we've seen, because I like green-based aggro a lot, and they're really hype. This card looks good to me. Speaking of cards that look good to me, there's a bunch of those today. This is Metallic Mimic. This is two generic mana for a 2-1 artifact shapeshifter. And as Metallic Mimic enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. Metallic Mimic is the chosen type in addition to its other types, but we're, we're not done. Each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. What? <laughs> what? Like, what? What? Like, this is awesome? Awesome for tribal decks, obviously. And there's not a whole bunch of those in standard right now, but humans is a thing that exists. You know, we might be able to put together a dwarves deck or even an artifact creature deck. This obviously goes in the artifact aggro deck. That's pretty stupid, so just... Whew, so many good things about this thing, and it goes in like maybe modern decks, maybe even the Merfolk deck wants to try this out, Professor, give that a give that a try, or Commander and EDH decks that want to play tribal themes, this works in those, literally any tribal deck can play this thing, and it'll make every creature after it that gets played a little bit bigger, that's so good, and it like works with plus one, plus one counter cards, you know, so just like so much good for just two mana of any color, any color, so will this instantly change the face of tribal decks in, in in eternal formats and fun formats like Commander? I think it'll at least try. I think it will at least try. And if we see more tribal themes in standard while this card is in the format, then yeah, absolutely. And just remember, by the way, Wizards just changed 
its rotation schedule to allow for things to be in the format longer. Like BFZ and Oath won't rotate when Amon Ket comes out. Those are going to be in the uh, format longer than we expected. So this will be in the format for like forever, <laughs> basically. So look out for tribal themes because this thing looks really good in standard if we get that push for tribal. But outside of standard even, this looks super hype. Just again, just to sum it up, any, any tribal deck at all can play this. At all. That's good. Here's Aeronaut Admiral right here. This is four mana. That's three and a white for a 3 1 human pilot with flying and vehicles you control have flying. Bomb and draft, bomb and sealed. You play this all day. The thing looks ridiculous. But constructed play, not so sure about. Our two big vehicles that we're really looking to play right now Heart of Quran and Smuggler's Copter um, already have flying. And like Sky Ship or Sky Sovereign, um, that already has flying too. So. In some of those decks, not really sure how impactful the card will be, you know. They're sealed in draft, yes. Every day, play it. As soon as you get it, Windmill Slam, do it. But in its constructed formats, four mana is a little bit too much for something that only gives a couple of your vehicles an ability they didn't already have. Rounding third right now, we're in the home stretch. This is Winding Constrictor, and it looks fun. This is a green and a black. That's two mana for a 2-3 snake. And if one or more counters would be placed on an artifact or creature you control, that many of those counters plus one are placed on that permanent instead. If you would get any, if you would get uh, one or more counters, you get that many of those counters plus one instead. All right, so first, point out the irony here in that if you're playing this in modern or something against an infect deck, it's a snake that gives you plus one poison counters. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, so that's the funny thing about the card, but in every other way, the card looks really, really good. It's just an uncommon, by the way. That's two mana for a two, three. Those are fantastic stats right there. And they obviously go, this goes fantastic in a plus one, plus one counters deck. Let me say that. But also in an energy deck, this goes pretty well because you'll get plus one energy counters every time you get energy. That is crazy. That's obviously crazy. And the funny thing is, by the way, I was just toying last night with writing out a green-black um, Aetherborn Marauder deck that just puts all the plus one, plus one counters on Marauder and swings in with haste. I was working on that last night. And this obviously could go pretty well in that deck, too. So, really like it a lot. You know, I like the stats on it. Like the aggressive mana cost. Like the fact that it works with, like, plus one, plus one counters, energy counters, charge counters, all kinds of stuff, you know. So, looks pretty stupid to me and will at least get played on a budget level on this channel. I can't wait to try and play with this card. It looks fantastic. Here's a card I alluded to earlier in the video, like at the very beginning. This is Siege Modification. It's just three mana. That's one and two red for an enchantment. It's an aura. And you can enchant a creature or a vehicle. And as long as Enchanted Permanent is a vehicle, it's, it's a creature in addition to its other types. You don't have to crew it. An Enchanted Creature gets plus three, plus oh, and first strike. All right, so again, looks looks innocuous. When I first saw this, I was like, yeah, you know, it's good. And then you read it again, and you're like, whoa, what? <laughs> like, okay, so on third turn, I can have a 6-3 Smuggler's Copter with first strike that can loot when it swings in. Or I can have a 7-4 Vigilance Flying Heart of Kiran. Like, bleh. <laughs> you can turn that one drop that we talked about, that's a 7-11, into a 10-11 first strike that you don't have to crew. That's, bah, like that, that six, six for three mana that we saw earlier. You don't have to crew it for four. You just like play it this on turn four and suddenly you've got a nine, three, first striker like that. Huh. <laughs> this card looks so dumb. And yeah, if they kill your vehicle, you get two for one. Absolutely. But this is one of those situations where I think it might be completely worth it. And note that you don't have to enchant just a vehicle. It's enchant creature or vehicle. So you can put this on a veteran motorist if you got nothing else to put it on. And suddenly you have a six power first striker. Come on. Like the card looks good to me. And I don't know if it'll make the competitive deck, but if the deck wants to go really, really fast, this could be a piece. Because again, sure you get two for one, but it will lead to out of nowhere victories because you don't have to. That leaves creatures open to attack that would otherwise have to crew like this, just so it's more damage that you're doing. Like the card looks good. I'm going to try this card out definitely because I mean, plus three plus one. First strike, don't have to crew guys. Leaves creeping creatures open to, to, to attack when they would otherwise have to crew. All of those things are crazy, crazy, crazy. So try it out. I'm I'm more hype about this card than I probably should be, but I 
card looks good to me. Here's Untethered Express right here. I like it's a good name too. It's a big old Triceratops train. That's cool. That's also cool. It's a four mana for a four four vehicle with trample. And whenever Untethered Express attacks, you put a plus one plus one counter on it, and you only crew it for one. This is something else that I'm not sure will make the competitive vehicles deck, um, or at least the red white vehicles deck. It could be in the just just straight up vehicles deck, you know, or maybe the mono white or mono red. I think that there's going to be a case for that. Um, either a mono white or a mono red just vehicles deck. That could be a thing too. Um, and this is not actually so bad. Sure, it costs four mana. It's only a four four, but as soon as it swings in, it'll become a five five. So a four mana five five looks a lot better. And it's got trample stapled on. And the best thing about it is it only crews for one. So like a three bin inspector can crew this. No problem, you know? Just a token can crew this. Servo or something, easy. And it gets counters. That's pretty cool, too. So the longer you have it out, the better it gets. This thing can become like an 8-8, you know? So do think that the card is designed very well, but as far as constructed play, I'm not too sure about it. Now, like, I'll say this one more time. In limited, you get this in sealed or, or, or draft, so slam it. Slam it on the table. It's a good card. This is a long video, but this is the last card right here. I just reloaded the page to make sure. This is Free Jam Regent. You get free jam. That's awesome. He's a, a six mana. That's four and two red, four, four dragon with improvise and flying. And you can pump um, a generic and a red into him to have him get plus two plus O oh until end of turn. Now this looks intro packy, but this is the reason that I just said there may be a mono red vehicles or a mono red artifact deck because this guy, this guy, like, again, I don't know if he's really intro packy. The improvise means that you can play this guy for two mana. Two mana. So, you know, earlier I ditched on um, improvised a, l a little bit. You know, I said that maybe I don't like tapping guys and all that, but with like mana rocks or something, you could get this guy out pretty easily and a couple other artifacts. You know, you could play this guy like turn four pretty pretty easily, I would say. And he's a 4-4 four, four flying. That's pretty good. You know, he's, he's got a pump ability. I don't think he's the best thing in the world, but I think in the mono red artifacts deck, you could definitely make a case for like a three or four of this guy. Um, and I'm going to try it out in that, you know, I've been trying to build the Mono Red Artifacts deck for a while, but it seems like it was missing a couple of pieces. And this is definitely a piece that could go into it. I want to try it out. But again, I'm not, I can't be sold on it yet. Not quite yet. It's got decent stats, but if it were 5-5, five, five, I would probably say all day. But 4-4 four, four that you can pump is a little different, but we'll try it. We'll try it. I'm very, very interested in a card that you can pay for just two mana. You get a 4-4 flyer. But we've already got Heart of Quran <laughs> jokes. By the way, it's worth pointing out that Heart of Quran will be a big card in this format. So people are going to be looking to take out 4-4 four, four flyers, whether it's with Grasp of Darkness or Plummet or Clip Wings or whatever. So while people are in a format where they're trying to figure out how to the best way to kill a 4-4 four, four flyer, this card gets a little bit worse. We have made it through. That is all the cards for today, or at least for now, if they release more cards at midnight like they sometimes do, then I'll try to get back on and talk to you guys. But that is all for now that I want to talk about. Um, let me know how you felt about all of these down there in the comments. You know, I want to get a good discussion in the sideboard going because there are an awful lot of cards today, and I know that some of them look really, really good, and that will either hype players up or make some players angry, and I want to hear both of your voices. So let me know how you feel about these down there in the comments. And if you like this content, you've made it all the way to the end, like the content. It's the best thing you can do for me. And you can also sub and hit that bell to make sure you get notifications when I put new spoiler videos up because you want to be the first to know that information. And I'll see you guys later. I'm Deb from SBMTG. As always, thanks for watching, my wizards. We made it. We did it.